Hi, this is Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and a math advisor for Texas Instruments. This video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. In this video, we're going to take a look at an important topic in AP Calculus, that of rectilinear motion, which means motion along a single straight line. Here's a typical problem. For this time interval, 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 10, imagine we have an object that's moving along the y-axis has an initial position y equals 1 at time t equals 0 and a velocity given by v of t. Now I've left that blank. I'm going to go ahead and enter the, the velocity now, but I'm going to enter it in a math box so it will be an active definition. We'll just type in v of t and I'm instead of using the equal sign I'm going to use the colon equals which is used for making a variable or function definition. Now our velocity is going to be given by the following formula. The natural log of t plus 1 times the sine of the quantity t plus e to the negative t. Now after I finish entering that, once we have the velocity function defined, we can answer these questions. We're asked to graph the acceleration function a of t, the position function y of t, and we're also asked to find the object's total displacement and the total distance traveled over that time interval 0 to 10. Instead of the function plotter, we're going to switch over to parametric, and you'll see why in a bit. So I go choose the parametric plotter, and that's going to give us a pair of equations, x1 and y1. I'll make x1 equal to t, our independent variable, and then make y1 of t. Well, for the time being, let's look at actually the velocity function. We weren't asked to graph it, but let's take a look at it anyway. I'll change the time interval to 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 10. And our increment for time, I'm going to change it to match up with the trace step size, which is going to be 0.3. And so I'll just edit t step to be 0.3. And let's also change the window to be more appropriate. Uh, we'll give ourselves a little bit of room on both sides. So I'm going to make x min negative 3, x max 12, even though our interval that we're interested in is from 0 to 10. Do an x scale of 1. And for y min, let's go with negative 3. And for y max, we'll go with positive 6. And again, we'll also use a y scale of 1. Now that we have the window the way we like it, we're ready to graph. And we'll enter and see what our graph of our velocity function looks like. There it is. Now we can turn to the problem at hand. Our first task is to find the graph of the acceleration function. So acceleration is the derivative of velocity, so I'll go back to my parametric grapher. We'll put t in as the independent variable again in x2 of t, and y2 of t we'll need to bring up our derivative template. So I find that in the set of templates we have here. We'll take the derivative with respect to t, of our velocity function v of t. I also need to edit the uh, t range and t step to match what we had before. So I'm setting the t range from 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 10 and the t step size will change to 0 0.3 and we're ready to graph. Uh, there's the graph of our acceleration function. Let me move these labels out of the way. So the red function graph is acceleration, blue function graphs are original velocity. And I wanted the graphs of both of these so we could look at the relationship between the two, where the acceleration changes from negative to positive, or positive to negative rather. We have a local maximum for velocity. Uh, the low point on the acceleration graph is corresponding to a very steep negative slope on my velocity graph where the acceleration changes from negative to positive we have a minimum velocity 
and where it changes from positive to negative again, we have another local maximum on our velocity. So that's a graph of the acceleration function. Let's now take a look at a graph of the position function. So I'm just going to edit the x2, y2, uh, and so we'll get a new graph in place of the acceleration graph. We'll now look at the position graph. Now the displacement that the object moves is going to be given by the antiderivative of velocity. So I'll need to get a definite integral. And we're using the fundamental theorem of calculus here. We're going to integrate from 0 to t of the velocity. Now it'll give us the basically the running displacement of the object as we move along. Now I'll use a different variable of integration than t. I'll use x. It's a dummy variable. So we'll integrate v of x dx. And we also have to keep in mind that we had an initial position of 1. So this is the displacement from time t equals 0, but since we're starting out at 1, we'll need to add that on as our initial position. And now we're ready to graph the position function, and there it is. Notice our initial position is y equals 1, where the velocity changes from positive to negative. We have a high vertical position on our position graph. Now the velocity was negative up until here, where it changed to positive again. That's a turnaround point, and that's where we had a low position on our position graph. Over here, as the velocity was positive again, where it last changes from positive to negative, is another high position point. Now let's go back to the parametric plotter, take advantage of it to actually simulate the motion of this object. Remember that it was moving along the y-axis. So I'm setting x3 of t to the constant 0 and putting that exact same position function in now for y3 of t. We'll change the time interval again to match up what was in the problem, 0 to 10, and I'll change that t step again to 0 0.3. Let's see what kind of graph this gives us. Mm, I don't see anything. Ah, there it is. Remember, the object was moving along the y-axis. What you're seeing here is the actual trace of the path that the object took as it moved al along the y-axis. Now I'm going to take advantage of the graph trace to actually simulate the motion of the object. When I turn on graph trace, I get a trace cursor. And as I increment the time, notice that that's the position of the object and we can see it moving up and down. Now the final part of our question asked us to calculate the total displacement and the total distance traveled by the object. To find total displacement we'll integrate the velocity over the time interval. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 10 v of t dt. This is going to give us the net change in the position of the object between the beginning of the time interval and the end. So as I integrate 0 to 10 v of t dt, I'm ending up with a value that's equal to 2.322. That means our object ended up 2.322 units above where it started. Now in contrast, if we want the actual distance that the object traveled. Remember, it went up and down and changed directions a few times. Instead of integrating the velocity, we're going to integrate the speed, which is the absolute value of the velocity. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 10 the absolute value of v of t dt, and this will give us the actual distance traveled by the object along the entire trip. and We can see it's much farther, 10.0978. Well that winds up this video. We hope we've shown you how parametric is a particularly useful tool for studying rectilinear motion. For resources like this tech video and others that can be useful in your AP Calculus classroom, please visit education.ti.com.